Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Women Racing to Win right here on the Grid Network. Joe San Diego, Daniel from Racers, the girls behind the helmet. I urge everyone participating in the chat room. Very excited. We have a special guest on the show. Very excited to welcome her to the part of the lead up to the 2021 W Series. She is from South Africa, the province of Gauteng. Has over 10 years of racing experience, 150 trophies, and over 6,000 hours on the track. Finishing the top 10 in the W Series in 2019. Distinguished guests, please join me in welcoming Tasman Pepper onto our program. Tasman, how are you doing today? Welcome. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Thank you very much for to Tasman for for joining us today. It's been it's a real pleasure to have her here, and uh, of course she uh, she's been one of the uh, the top drivers in in the W Series 2019 season. Uh, of course, the 2020 season, as everyone knows, uh, has been can has been cancelled, and so the drivers that were finishing into the top 12 uh, uh, will be back in in 2021, and of course Tasman will be on the grid. Um, and we, we've asked this question to uh, our previous guests on the show. Uh, there will be many fans new to W Series this year because, of course, uh, it will be uh, on the bigger platform uh, of, of everyone in, 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 for, with Formula One. Uh, so uh, likely there will be uh, new fans uh, uh, that do not know the, the drivers. So uh, please introduce yourself with three words to any fans that <laughs> might not know you uh, as well. Uh, okay, so I'm Tasman Pepper and I'm from South Africa. It's uh, very difficult to introduce myself in three <laughs> words only. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been racing for, this would be my 26th year of competing. Um, and so yeah, um, new to the W Series in 2019 and um, looking forward to the 2021 season. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, uh, you've been racing for, for quite, a, quite some time now. Uh, did you start in karting your career? Yeah, I started at the age of five in karting, in a PTC kart. Um, progressed through karting up until I was about 15 years old when I was able to, to move over into main circuit racing where I did formal boards. Um, I then did in 2018, I did Formula BMW in Asia where we actually also raced with three of the Formula One races um, on the same weekend. And then due to a lack of funding, I came back to South Africa and couldn't continue racing internationally. Um, did Formula Volkswagen back home for another couple of years. Um, and then from there, I went from single seaters into saloon car racing, where I competed in the, the Polar Cup um, class, which is a single make front wheel drive class here. That's very, very competitive. Um, and then in 2018, I applied for W Series, and in 2019, I got to race W Series. So it was a really good year. Yeah, definitely. And we, we've spoke about this uh, um, in 2019 when we met in, on, on the W Series uh, in the W Series paddock. Um, at, at the beginning, it was very all very uncertain because there were a lot of drivers coming from with very different fee, um, backgrounds. And uh, of course, it was a huge step from uh, for, for you coming to, from a national touring car series to an international Formula Three championship. Uh, how was the the switch for you? And how was the pro talk us through the process of the selections? Ah, uh, yeah, the switch was actually really difficult. Um, obviously, being raced the the saloon car and front wheel drive for six years prior to that, um, I kind of had forgotten really about the single seater, and so to adjust was was quite a big step for me to do. Um, but, you know, every time in the seat, it got better and better, um, I got more comfortable and I like, I progressed through the, through the season really nicely. So I think going into the, the new season, there's not gonna be a massive jumping zone like I had to do prior to that in 2019. Um, yeah, I mean, the selection process was really difficult and they definitely tested us through our paces um but it pushed us to to be who we are and i'm just really happy to have made it into into the w series grid oh definitely and uh describe us a little bit of the feelings that you uh that you had when you first jumped into the tattoos formula 3 car for the first time in almeria 
yeah like i said it was uh it was really difficult i mean i hadn't hadn't done a seat fit in a in a formula car for for six years or seven years so um sitting in the seat for the first time trying to adjust myself to get comfortable thinking everything's fine in the pits um and then learning as soon as i went out on track the next day that i really struggled to turn the car because i was just sitting too close to the steering wheel um and initially i struggled to do more than three laps in the car so i was stressing a little bit in the beginning of the of the test not thinking that i was going to make it through and luckily the mechanics helped me adjust my seating position and all we did was just chop away the seat uh, just to get me a little bit away from the from the steering wheel and the very next day i found like over two two and a half seconds to almost three seconds just by getting a little bit more comfortable in the seat so um in a saloon car you have a ready-made seat that you sit in and you can adjust the backrest um how it is just to lie the, the position of the seat down but in the single seater it actually molds to to your body so I learned a lot um, about seating positions again, and um, once we went into the season, uh, it was a lot easier for me to obviously do more than three laps. So um, it's all a learning experience all the time, and every time you get in the car, you're learning um, all the time, and you're obviously learning from all the other drivers who to get to drive these cars um, a little bit more than I get to. So um, yeah, really tough, but really great in this in the same sense as you said uh, you progressed th through the season very well and i i think uh, uh, we also featured you on on our uh, top five uh, revelations of the of the at the end of the season because it was really yeah. impressive to, to see you yeah to see progressing through the through the season and uh, now we are on the we, we one year under your belt uh, already um and very very strong results in 2019 uh, uh, that certainly built the confidence in yourself i think uh, what is the, the target now coming into 2021 um it's basically to improve on where i left off um the last race wasn't um what i wanted or what i'd hoped for and the Aston race just before that, I mean, I had my best qualifying, but made a silly mistake and crashed into turn one. So um, I want to keep improving from that and, you know, continue trying to fight for those top five positions as well as fighting for as many podium positions as possible. I think the more I, I got to drive, the, the better and more comfortable I got in the car and the more confidence I got, got within the car. And so I at least now know going into the season already what I'd learned in 2019 and what I need to work on going into 2021. So I think the more I get to drive, I think that fear is just going to come back. It's a pity we never got to race last year. Um, but, you know, I think it's only it's only going to be better on in 2021. Um, the competition is going to be really tough. Everyone's on the A game. Um, a lot of a lot of the drivers have got to race last year and are still like busy racing at the moment. So I've been out the seat for quite a while, but I think a lot of the, the other drivers have also been. So I think it's going to be a mixed match between who's been driving a lot and who hasn't been driving at all. And I think getting leading into the first race after going through a five day test prior to that, um, I think we might be, you know, a lot on the same playing field so we'll just have to take it as it comes and yeah i'm just hoping to to carry on progressing like i did at um towards the end of 2019. yeah that, that was literally one of my next uh, questions if you thought if you think that maybe some of the of the ladies that had the opportunity to race this year uh, well sorry in 2020 uh, and some others that were sidelined because of course of, of the of the health crisis the global health crisis do you think it can make a difference and you already uh, answer to that and i do agree that the test can uh, level up the, the playing field a little bit uh, but let's see in uh, in 2021 we have a uh, question from uh, our live uh, uh, viewers uh, it says uh, here here it is what's your favorite racetrack that you have raced or you want to race on um i think at the moment my favorite racetrack would be Essen. um simply just because that was pretty much the best I did in W Series, well, as close as I did get to the, the front. Um, I think I'm really, really looking forward to driving at Spa. Um, and then the local racetrack that I really enjoy racing on is Kilani in Qatar. Yeah. 
Um, also, in uh, in twenty twenty was such a, a tough year for for many reasons, and uh, but we still had some uh, some interesting races in with W Series with the Esports League, and you did pretty well in uh, in that as well. Uh, it was uh, sim racing something that you had tried uh, even before the uh, the lockdown. Um, to be honest, uh, sim racing wasn't really anything that I, I was involved in prior to the eSport championship. So I was a bit nervous going into it, not knowing what to expect. Um, I had driven on the sim before, but not really raced any of it. So I drove in the sim in 2019 and that's how I learned the tracks I was going to because I had never been to any of them before. Um, so it was quite a surprise to me um, to be, you know, fighting for those top uh, positions in, in the eSport championship and it was a lot of fun and also a little bit frustrating at some times um, but yeah it was it was really good and I'm going to continue doing it so it really helps with with feedback and learning things about the cars and you know you can play with setup and there's so many things that you can play with on the, on the eSport that uh, really is going to help and benefit you in the real racing world um, and to learn the tracks that I'm going to go race on this year because I've obviously never been to any of them again. So, um, yeah, I think that it's a good it's a good learning tool. This leads this leads me to to a, a one more question. Um, how do you often uh, uh, approach a new track? What what, what is the uh, the process that you usually uh, do uh, go, go through when uh, when you're uh, studying a new track? Um, the best I find is to to watch videos on, on the track and um, try and watch videos of, of cars that we're going to be re racing in um, just to look at uh, turn points and braking points and, and gears. Um, that's a lot of the focus that you look at. Um, I think when you get to the track, there's obviously walking the track and looking at all the different angulations as well as, you know, all the different approaches that you can go into the corner. There's obviously a lot of lines that are, are shown in the track from from the grip levels from previous events. And so it does help guide you around certain certain lines around the track. Um, I did find the sim obviously helps a lot with that as well and getting to drive cars that um, we compete with. Obviously not identical, but very similar. Um, it gives you a basic understanding of where your braking zones and um, gears as, as well as your turning points and the lines you use around the track. So it definitely helps prepping yourself in the sim before you get to the track so that you already sort of have an understanding of where you need to be. And once you do a, a whole session, you, you go back and you look at different videos again, as well as data, and that's how you just keep progressing through the weekend. Now, Tasman, you come from a family of racers. Your father raced touring cars in South Africa. Jordan races GT cars. For viewers, especially here in the United States, not familiar, how is the racing motorsport scene in South Africa and how competitive is a racing them in South Africa? Um, I think it's actually really competitive. Um, we've had the guys who have gone over have had their success stories. Um, it's just really difficult for us to, to get internationally. So um, the, the level of competition is really high here and uh, we don't have your GT3 cars and your top single seaters here in South Africa, but the classes that we do have are really, really competitive. So um, I'd say the level of competition is really good and it does prepare us a lot for, for the international scene. And speaking of international seats, of course, open wheel, live open wheel racing, Europe and of course in the United States as well, where we see IndyCar, the Indy Light Series, and of course the Indianapolis 500 is racing, especially like American open wheel, like Indy Lights, IndyCar, and even the Indy 500 of great interest to you? Yeah, it's always it's always good to watch. Um, we obviously don't have anything like that here, but um, it's always a good experience to watch and I'd love to go and watch it live. Um, if I can race it, that's even better. Um, it's obviously completely different to what I'm used to. Um, but they do obviously have circuits that they do. Uh, it's not just all over racing, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's always, it's always nice to watch. Um, it's, you know, I love all forms of motorsport, whether it's motocross, 
IndyCar, GT3 racing, uh, supercars in Australia. I mean, you name it, we watch it. <laughs> That's really awesome. Excited to hear on your passion for motorsports and watching all their different disciplines of racing. Now, 2021 W Series, you're going to be traveling at the same venues with Formula One. That includes the United States, Austin, Texas, Mexico City, and of course, across Europe. Is there any particular tracks? I know we had a question from the chat room, but is there any particular tracks within the W Series you're most looking forward to? And is the race in the United States something that has always been like, oh, this is something that's going to be really exciting or just more like focus like any racer, if this is another race, go out there and just perform, <laughs> focus on winning? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's always exciting to travel to new places. I've never been to America or Mexico, so I'm actually really looking forward to those events. And like you said, we're racing alongside Formula One, so it's, it's going to be an experience of its own. Um, but I, like I said earlier, I think Spa is one of um, most people's uh, list to drive and to race on. It's such an iconic track. So. I think that's one that I'm really, really looking forward to, as well as Silverstone. I've been to watch many Grand Prix there, so I'm looking forward to being able to drive there myself. Um, and then, obviously, America, Mexico. Uh, yeah, who wouldn't want to go there? <laughs> uh, Jasmine, you, you are uh, probably one of the most likable characters that I have found in uh, in W Series in, in 2019. You're always smiling, very upbeat personality, and still uh, yet very humble. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about yourself out of, outside of the racetrack. Who is Tasmin uh, uh, outside of motorsport? I, I know that you like to play golf and stuff like that. Yeah, I think motorsport's been in, in my blood for as long as I can remember. Um, but I, I'm very an, like an active person, so I don't like just sitting around and watching TV for a weekend. So anytime we can be active, whether it's going to watch different forms of motorsport or we, I've just recently got into mountain biking. So we're now mountain biking as a family and good interaction with other people. Um, I play quite a bit of golf. I wouldn't say I'm the best golfer in the world, but um, yeah, we play golf. Um, we do a lot of water sports. We have a place um, by a lake or a dam, as we call it. And we go there as often as we can during the summer. So we do a lot of like wakeboarding and surfing behind the boat, um, skiing, jet skis. Um, so yeah, I think it's pretty much, you can sum it up as I like being active. Um, I like being outdoors and yeah, just enjoying time with my family and my friends and, you know, just enjoying everything about what life has to offer. As you said, as being a very active person and who likes to be outside, um, the, the first lockdown uh, in, in last year must have been a pretty, pretty tough for, for everyone. To tell us a little bit more about how you coped with that. Um, it was probably the one of the most frustrating three months of my life. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we were stuck inside. We weren't even allowed to exercise um, outdoors. So you were confined within your property and you were allowed to go to the shops to go and buy food and you had to come straight back. So it was really, really frustrating. Um, you obviously can train in your back garden or you can, but there's only so many things that you can do. You move from upstairs to downstairs, sit in the sun outside for a little while. And then, you know, that's it. You can lie by the pool for a little bit longer. And it, we ended up cleaning the house um, a lot. Um, we just try to find as many things as we could do. And, you know, I even learned to cook a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i think uh that was really frustrating and i hope we don't go back to that again but it was just such a strange time it's something that you can't like in the future i don't know how we're going to explain these stories that you know you were confined to your property and that was it you couldn't do anything so i'm pretty glad that we we're able to get out again we still have curfew times that we aren't allowed past and we need to be home in those in those uh, in the, those hours of the day um but yeah, I'm glad that we were able to do the outdoor activities again because I was going a little bit mad. <laughs> yeah, strange time we live in. 
And uh, of course, with, with motorsport being, uh, I always say that the motorsport is, is often a very uh, psychological sport. And uh, you always have to, to train uh, with, with the goal in mind, with, with something uh, uh, with, that gives you motivation. So we also spoke with some other uh, drivers uh, in W Series saying that they had a little bit of a hard time training because they didn't have like a short term goal uh, or anything yeah. to look forward to. Uh, was it something also on your mind? Yeah, I mean, we, we went to our um, fitness test uh, well, camp in, in the beginning of the year. And we obviously all were really excited for the year that was coming um, ahead of us. And obviously we're to a point and you, can, you get home and you're really excited. And, you know, in two months time, we're going back overseas and we're going to start racing and competing and everything gets put on halt. And you know, like a lot of the other drivers said, it was really difficult to to keep pushing yourself because we never knew when it was going to end or if it was going to change or if we were going to get racing again towards the end of the year. And I think when the season was cancelled completely, I think everyone was so devastated and, you know, so put back that we kind of, you know, went into a little bit of slump and was just like, you know, what what are we actually working towards? You know, like this is the first year in 25 years that I hadn't competed at all. So it was really strange and frustrating. Um, but when we found out that we were going to be competing again in the 21, 2021 season, I think everyone got all excited again and knew there was something to work towards. So yes, there was a, there was a little bit of a gap that we maybe didn't train as hard as we should have been training or we couldn't train as hard as we could have been training. So I, I'm glad that we well, that I'm back um, in my training mode and looking forward to something and working towards something for, for the new season. And, you know, that really motivates you as a person and as an individual. So yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to the 2021 season. <laughs> Uh, we have a another question from from our followers here, and I think this is pretty a cool question. Uh, it, it says, uh, uh, "Yeah, if you first, uh, if you enjoy NASCAR, of course, having some uh, some uh, viewers from the US, that's well, well, <laughs> is kind of, <laughs> something that comes to comes up." Yeah, no, I do. Like I said, I, I watch all forms of motorsports. I mean, if you go to my parents' house, my dad always has some form of motorsport on the TV. So. My mom watches her TV upstairs and my dad is racing on permanently <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> so, yeah. And then uh, what's your car number? Well, of course, uh, I personally know that, but if, if you have some story behind the number, uh, that, that would be interesting. Um, to be fair, I'm not sure how I got the number. Um, I just remember always having it as a, as a younger girl, like a younger kid in karting, and it's kind of stuck with me. So when I competed in... in different levels of of karting there was always a number that you needed to put before your number um so that's the only ever time that it ever changed so it was a two three one or a one three one or um yeah i've always tried to stick with 31 and i've kind of just always always had it and yeah i, I don't have a specific reason for it um somehow i got it <laughs> and i've literally stuck with it my entire uh, racing career yeah that's cool um, I, I would like to ask you if uh, to describe your best quality and your worst weakness. Um, my best quality is I'd say that I don't give up. Um, my weakness, I'd say sometimes I have a little bit of doubt within myself. So it's something that I, I, I really work on, um, especially with racing. You, you've got to be confident all the time. So. I feel like sometimes that holds me back a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely working on it and um, have been working on it. Um, and I feel like it's it's getting better and just having a little bit more confidence in myself and my abilities um, only pushes me to, to improve. Yeah, and in 2019, you absolutely proved that uh, you can be very, uh, very sure about yourself because that was a, a stunning year. Um, and yeah, uh, of course, so speaking of 2020, you were also set to drive a Formula One car. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. So you see, COVID, COVID really messed things up um, quite a lot. Uh, there was Formula One's coming to South Africa and we were going to do a demo day. And 
I was going to drive one of the the Renault cars. So I was really excited for that. And uh, literally 20 days before it was about to happen, lockdown happened. So <laughs> that put a, a whole bummer on on the works. But uh, yeah, I mean these these things happen and. You never know. I might get an opportunity sometime in the near future to do it again. Yeah, fingers crossed. I, it would be really awesome to see you driving a, a Formula <laughs> One car. And um, is there anything that you wish you had figured out earlier in your career that you would like to now pass on to the younger to our younger drivers uh, that is maybe just starting out? Um. Yeah, I mean, motorsport's really expensive. So if you can have a decent backing that that helps you progress through through the ranks and get to where you want, it obviously helps a lot. Um, one thing I wish I didn't do was follow. It's it's hard to say now because I'm racing single seaters, but I wish that I had went saloon car racing from from 15 years old because. Um, like my brother did, he's obviously in a factory GD3 drive already and um, he's six years younger than me. So we learned a lot from my experience and it was only due to the lack of funding. Um, single seaters is really, really expensive to to follow and to pursue um, in order to try and get to Formula One. So unless you have that right backing structure behind you, it's really difficult to pursue where um, saloon cars is also, yes, it's still very expensive, but it's a lot more doable um, to to reach where, where you want to go. So I think that's the only thing I would have changed. Um, we obviously learned from me and that's why my, my brother went the route that he did. Mm -hmm. that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, even though probably single seaters gave you some uh, exposure that maybe can uh, open up some uh, some opportunities, like like uh, we just said, like for, for you it was maybe the uh, the Formula One demo run. Uh, I mean, uh, with W Series definitely opened up uh, quite a lot of opportunities to to some to some of you, uh, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, W Series has opened up massive opportunities. Um, I would have never been contacted by a Formula One team ever <laughs> to do a demo run. So, I mean, you, you can see the doors that they're opening and um, they've got the right things in mind to to push female in motorsport. And, you know, they, they have one goal and that's to get women to hopefully Formula One one day. And they've they've gone about it the right way. So, Without W Series, I wouldn't be competing internationally, and um, a lot of people wouldn't still wouldn't know who I was, you know. So um, now it's like you said, is no one knew me before W Series, and and now there's so many people that that know who Tasman Pepe is from South Africa. So um, it, it's it's such an amazing experience, and you know I take it under, and I I push myself so much because I want to do well and I want to prove every everyone you know that I can can do it and I can achieve it um and I don't want to waste this opportunity this opportunity only comes around once in a lifetime so um I'm going to do everything I can to to better myself and to improve on the 2019 season and you never know which doors it's going to open um like a lot of people say is Formula One still your goal no realistically no um but G3 is a realistic goal. So you never know if I can do really well in the W Series um, this year. Um, you never know the doors that it, it can open up from there. And that is what they they are pushing for. And that's what they're striving for. And it is to create opportunity for women in motorsport and for everyone to start taking women in motorsport seriously. Speaking about women in motorsport, uh, we've seen uh, quite a lot of, uh, of uh, all-female crews in, in endurance racing in the past year. In, uh, in, at Le Mans, for example, there were, uh, for the first time, two fully female uh, teams, uh, one in, in LMP2 and one in, uh, in GTE. Uh, is that something that uh, interests you on the long run? Yeah, for sure. Um, if you're in an all-female team, it's even, even better. But to me, it doesn't really matter what I'm... I've only ever competed up um, against guys my entire life up until this point. So for me, motorsport is motorsport. It's not a female or a male sport. Um, I'm there to compete and I'm there to win. And uh, everyone, who I'll, everyone else who's on the grid is there to do the exact same thing. So it's not about a separation or segregation. It's, it's, it's to, we, we do it because we love it and because we can do it. And 
we have these amazing opportunities and you know that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring it back to not being a male dominated sport you know it's it should be a sport that that everyone can do or that everyone does already but having more notice on, on females in motorsport as well yeah absolutely um i would say also i have also uh, told this to catherine von muir uh, in in 2019 uh that i was maybe not so sure about the w series concept at the beginning because you know i have, have been uh, advocating for women in motorsport for for, a, for a, a, quite a lot of years and and then uh, seeing a championship with 100 percent only only women it, i it wasn't probably the best idea in my mind but still, after the, the, the first couple of weekends, uh, I definitely changed my mind because I, I had the opportunity to, to see that you, you had uh, opportunities to, and, and, and also uh, some of you were not racing because of a lack of budget. So I think that's the most, uh, the single most uh, innovative feature of, of the W Series, which is really, really interesting and important. And speaking about women in motorsport also, it's a growing trend in the past few years, luckily. And uh, does it happen to you often that you are asked by a young girl uh, how to enter motorsport? Yeah, I think a lot of young girls um, are scared, are scared to enter it because it's seen as such a male-dominated sport and there's so little females that are actually competing. But to be fair, I didn't know there were that many females who are competing. So I think even us as females in in the sport didn't realize how many there were around the world. Um, and I just, I, I don't think that anyone should be scared to to pursue something that they really want to do. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's male dominated at the moment, but we make we make a stride as well and we also show that we we're more than capable of of winning races and competing at at the top levels um and hopefully seeing a female in formula one one day will will prove that point um a little bit more and yeah i just i think a lot of girls are scared to enter it but i think once you're in it you realize you have you have a place so mm -hmm. they just mustn't be scared to to put their their foot forward and pursue something they really want to do. Is the co coaching something that interests you? We, we, we've seen uh, quite a lot of, uh, of W Series racers are also uh, starting to coach uh, young drivers. Yeah, so we actually have um, a racing team here in South Africa um, that my dad obviously ran for, for many years with, with us in, in the team as well. And um, I've kind of taken over over the, the the coaching all within the team, and my dad doesn't go to as many races, so I'm basically the the engineer. Yes, it's not as professional as as a lot of um, international events that you go to, but for South Africa, it's 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 serious, and um, that's what I I am pushing towards. And I want to also start helping young girls progress through their careers within motorsports, and that's what the the end goal is. Um, you know, just to help other girls, uh, you know, reach what they want to, their, their full potential. So, yeah, it's, it is something that I am currently doing, um, but I want to start doing a little bit more as, as the years go on. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of, of uh, South Africa, last, uh, last week I attended the uh, Black Book Motorsport Virtual Summit with the uh, Formula One Global Director of uh, the Race Promotions, uh, Chloe Target Adams who said that uh, bringing back to uh, the African continent and to South Africa in particular uh, is one of the sports priorities. And also Lewis Hamilton has been uh, one of the advocates for, for this. Uh, what do you think about it, uh, about the potential return of uh, South Africa to only Formula One calendar? Yeah, I think it will be big for, for South Africa. And just to get South Africa back on the map, I think that's the most important thing. And a lot of people forget about our country <laughs> or don't really know about it, you know, and it, it will be nice to have a Formula One event here again and just to bring that sort of publicity back back to South Africa. And I think they have a lot to do to improve the track. Um, but I think they're definitely working towards it and, and trying to get Formula One here. So once it's here, I think it's going to be it's going to mean a lot for South Africa and also just bring a lot of exposure and publicity back back to, to where we need it. Yeah, definitely. But also, also you have uh, some some pretty great drivers down there. You have, well, apart from uh, yourself and your brother, Jordan, also the Van der Lindes, uh, pretty, pretty great drivers. 
Um, speaking about the the next uh, the next uh, season in W Series, uh, you had uh, in last February the opportunity to meet the new the newcomers drivers in uh, in February in London, I think. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, those activities that you did there and uh, who you think uh, are going to be your uh, biggest competitors in, uh, in in the next season, the upcoming season. Um, it's yeah, it's hard to to talk about um, the new drivers that are going to be in the class, but um, obviously I've never competed against them and I don't really know completely what their entire background is. Um, I know a lot come from karting and some have already done single seaters, so they're obviously going to be up there. Um, I know a lot of them have been testing already, so <laughs> they've already you know got that their bums in the seats and, and done the laps to to prepare them for the 2021 season. Um, the ones that I can talk about that I know for definite would be Jamie Chadwick. She obviously raced and competed last year. Um, I'd definitely say Alice Powell. She's really quick. Um, Emma. Emma really, really showed what she could do last year. And she's she's really feisty and, and ready to race. Um, yeah, Marta, I think majority of the grid i think anyone can win to be honest um it's just going to be who can who can get up to to that playing field as quick as possible and i think that's that's going to be the design factor yeah i absolutely agree with that there's also some more comments uh, someone saying that they will probably make the trip to texas to cw series which is very exciting and very cool um but i would say uh, joe do you have any more question for, for tasman Oh, no, I've just been following the chat room, following all the questions. Tasman, definitely we thank you for being on the program today, and we encourage all our viewers, follow Tasman Pepper. You can visit her website, tjp31racing.com, as well as Twitter and Instagram under tjp31, Facebook, Tasman Pepper. Tasman, thank you for joining us again. We really appreciate your time, and best of luck in 2021. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. It was really good to have a, a nice, uh, nice chat. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see you in uh, in Valencia for the tests. Um, if everything, you know, it, it's it's allowed. Uh, we, we don't know what happens one day from the next. But yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> yeah, if we're allowed to travel. <laughs> exactly. If I can leave South Africa, that is the next... <laughs> The next task at hand. So Thank yeah, you. hopefully see you soon in the paddock. Um, it's always always nice to see a friendly face. Um, we obviously we saw a lot of you uh, in the 2019 season. So yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Tasmin. See you. Bye. Wonderful having Tasmin on the program today. I know. Definitely, we encourage all the fans to always follow all the races that we feature on the program. And definitely thanks to all the people that participated in the chat room. Now, of course, along with W Series, we had some women racing this past weekend here in the United States, Arca East Series. Can you tell us, Daniel, about some of the racers that we saw in the Arca East Series this weekend? Oh, yeah, definitely. There was an interesting uh, debut for, uh, for a young driver, uh, Stephanie Moyer. Uh, with a 23-year-old uh, driver from the US making her uh, debut in the ARCA level. Uh, she had competed in stock cars previously in uh, uh, at local level. Uh, but yeah, big step forward to the ARCA Menards Series East. She made her debut at Pensacola track. It's a short track and she's uh, looking forward to uh, put together some more uh, short track uh, schedule in, uh, in this year. Uh, she didn't do too uh, too bad. Uh, she qualified in uh, intense position and then finished the race in uh, eighth place. Uh, had a couple of spins thro uh, through the, uh, the the race. Uh, brought out a couple of times the yellow flags. The one time that she was tagged from from behind, uh, but still finished the race, uh, uh, which was the most important thing for for her in uh, in her first uh, very first uh, race in uh, at that level. Uh, so we are definitely looking forward to see more racing from uh, Stephanie uh, in the future. Very exciting, and especially starting the short track, that is always really tricky, very challenging for any driver, and definitely a top 10 finish in your debut. Super exciting way to start off your stock car season. 2021 Arc Menard Series, East will definitely be following. Of course, we know Gracie Trotter, several other racers 
throughout the country, as well as NASCAR. But before we preview the NASCAR weekend, the women racing there, it is March, Women's History Month. Every day so far, we have been posting on Twitter and Instagram a past or current woman in motorsports. We encourage everyone to check out the hashtag Women's History Month. And all year long, be sure to check out the hashtag Women in Motorsport. Great way to learn about all the females working in motorsports, whether it's in the technical side, management, and of course, the racers that we talk about week in and week out. Daniel, each week, we're very fortunate to have racers come here, discuss about their racing progress throughout, whether it's the W Series, GT, or hopefully someday in the future, American Stock Car Racing. Bring awareness to all the women who race in. When it comes to especially new fans, and they ask you a question like, oh, can you tell us about some of the female racers that I should start following or some of the ones significant in the past? Who are some of the racers that come to mind when especially introducing them to new fans? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think there are a lot of uh, important names uh, that uh, made history uh, for, for women in the sport. Uh, one name I would say definitely has to be Danica Patrick uh, in the 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, 2005. Sorry, uh, she really made history at the Indianapolis 500. And then it went on to be a, a very big name in in, Indica, in both IndyCar and in NASCAR. And uh, of course, um, a very, very huge following both in the US and in Europe. Uh, she won the, uh, the race in, uh, in 2008 at the Motegi Speedway in Japan, so making history and becoming the first woman to, uh, to win a major open wheel race uh, in, uh, in the US. So definitely has to be one of the names, but also Sarah Fisher has to be one of, of the names that we mentioned. Uh, she was the first woman to claim a pole position in IndyCar. Uh, she also had a, a, very gr a really important career as a team owner in IndyCar and also drove a Formula One car in Indianapolis. She drove in 2005 the McLaren Formula One car. Uh, Catherine Legg is a, is a very big name also in the industry. She will race in, uh, in the ELMS this year. Uh, had a long, uh, long history in, uh, in any kind of cars, really. From, uh, from, uh, also, she also tested a Formula One car, uh, the Minardi, in uh, December 2005. Uh, but also both in open wheel uh, racing, she she uh, drove in both IndyCar and Champ Car, and also in uh, in GT and touring cars. She did uh, the DTM, then of course the Daytona uh, 24 hour. Uh, she she raced. Uh, she was set to race in in the um, 24 hour of Le Mans last year, but of course she had that injury that prevented her from from doing so. But hopefully we will see her back on track this year. Uh, so she, she's another very important name. Uh, speaking about historic names, I would also mention uh, Lella Lombardi. Uh, we had, uh, uh, of course, yesterday, it was 29 years since uh, her death. Uh, she's currently the only female driver to, uh, to, to have scored points in, in Formula One and the last Formula One uh, driver to, to enter a race in 1976. So quite a lot of years uh, that we are waiting for the next uh, women racer uh, at the top level in, in motorsport. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we have very, very good drivers coming up. Uh, we have Jamie Chadwick, the inaugural champion in, in W Series in 2019. Uh, she has also been confirmed as part of the Williams uh, Driver Academy in the, in the past few days. Um, we have uh, Tatiana Calderon uh, that also is part of uh, a Formula One team, the Alfa Romeo Sauber, in a development driver role. She will again race uh, in uh, in Japan at the top level, uh, Japan, uh, the Japanese Super Formula, and also will be in uh, back with the uh, Richard Mill Racing in the LMP2 car in the, the uh, WEC. Uh, and the WEC, so that's definitely another uh, important name uh, to look up uh, for uh, for um, for women in the, in the sport. Uh, but many many drivers, uh, every every driver competing in W Series is uh, is making uh, is writing as a small page of our sports history, and we definitely encourage all of you to follow them. One hundred percent agree. You brought up a lot of great names. I know when it comes to some of my early childhood memories, Shauna Robinson in the NASCAR, the X-23s in the 90s, she was racing there. It was one of the first female races that I can remember growing up. 
and Dan of course Sarah Fisher when she got into IndyCar everything with Danica Patrick and Sarah Fisher as a car owner too I mean she gave Joseph Newgarden the opportunity to race IndyCar as well too Joseph Newgarden got some good finishes got a victory I believe with Ed Carpenter in the Sarah Fisher vehicle so Sarah Fisher definitely on and off the track has done a lot as well as coaching drivers as well some big names and definitely encourage everyone again the hashtag women's history month and all year long not just the month of march women in motorsports get to know some of the women in motorsports that are making a difference all over the place now this upcoming weekend we've got several women racing including in the nascar camper world truck series jennifer joe cobb she's entering las vegas this weekend and her chevrolet one of the big things of course for her she's going to be starting a little bit towards the middle of the pack because of the way nascar works without qualifying it goes based off their last finishing position the daytona road course was a little bit of a rough weekend for jennifer joe cobb so she's going to be starting a little further back compared to where she did in the daytona road course however it is las vegas motor speedway we got a lot of grooves there a lot of options if she could have a good handling truck i anticipate her to have a solid finish probably easily in the top 20. Another driver, and of course, it's a rookie season, but a lot of expectation, Haley Deegan. She's going to be starting further back as well, too, compared to Daytona Road Course after having a late race spin and then mechanical issues, apparently, on the last lap. With Haley Deegan, this is going to be almost a home race. She's from the West Coast, California, Nevada, not that far away. It's going to be unfortunate you don't have the big fan support turnout out there. But definitely this has to be a weekend. Very excited for her and her number one Monster Energy Ford. Very excited to see what her and Jennifer Jokov could do at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. But of course, besides NASCAR, we have some sports car racing, including GT and GT4 America. Yeah, uh, these two championships are uh, kicking off their season in uh, Sonoma, California. Uh, so the um, SROs Championships uh, GT World Challenge America. Uh, we'll see Erin Vogel, our uh, dear friend of, uh, of our show, Erin Vogel making her debut in the GT3 uh, category. Um, she's racing with a beautifully um, colored uh, pink and, uh, well, pop purple and red uh, Mercedes uh, AMG GT3 car. Uh, last year, she did the uh, GT4 America Championship in the um, McLaren that you are seeing now on the screen. Uh, she did very well. It was her first season at uh, such a level in GT4. Now she's making the, uh, the jump into uh, GT3, so it's going to be really exciting to see her uh, racing this weekend in, in Sonoma. And also we have Taylor Hagler also making her debut in GT3 in the GT3 class. Uh, she was previously racing in, uh, in the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge in the TCR category, uh, so another pretty, pretty good jump, a good step forward for, for Taylor. Uh, she's from Texas and uh, will be racing in an, in an Acura NSX GT3 car. Uh, the uh, Pirelli GT4 Championship, of course, also follows the uh, GT World Challenge America uh, at Sonoma, and we'll we'll see uh, another all-female crew on on the grid. It will be the uh, Richard Mille sponsored uh, Porsche GT4 uh, by um, lined up by Murillo Racing, uh, and uh, we we spoke to, we talked about this uh, lineup uh, in the previous episode. Uh, the, we will see uh, Christina Nielsen, the double uh, IMSA champion uh, uh, from Denmark, uh, lining up alongside uh, the young uh, American driver uh, Aurora Strauss. So definitely a couple of races uh, to, to, to follow closely in, uh, in Sonoma, California. Some big races to follow. It's going to be a really exciting weekend overall. Be sure to visit racers the girls behind the helmet their website calendar each and every week of all the female racers racing every weekend and of course you can follow them on instagram and twitter as well and be sure to like and subscribe to the grid network so that way you don't miss any of our programs we'll be back on the air of course next thursday then tomorrow i mean excuse me saturday getting a little bit ahead of myself saturday grid life pre-race sunday grid life wrap-up and then every wednesday grid life news for daniel at racers the girls behind the helmet i'm joe san diego thank you for watching
Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Joe San Diego here. Want to invite you to go check out Poblis. Poblis is a dog clothing and accessory company based in Austria. Ten percent of each of your purchases goes to helping dogs in need, whether it's homeless, sick, or ill dogs. This is one of the reasons why we support it. Kiska here is a rescue dog from rural Alaska and our grid office dog. We care about our furry buddies, and we know you do as well. Definitely check out PaulBliss.com. There's a link on the video description, and by clicking on that link, you get a 10% discount on your purchase as well.